Um, good morning everyone, me again. Um, I often tell people that, um, you know, what you see on social media isn't necessarily the, the reality of what, what life can be like. Um, because we do tend to put ourselves having fun and having a great time and everything being happy and looking healthy and then I kind of shoot myself in the foot a little bit by doing that because then I wonder why people don't really understand, you know, that I'm actually sick. And I think, well, no wonder, because all they see is the positive stuff. And I've often said to people, you know, what you don't see is those days when I, you know, can barely get out of bed and um, just want to sleep all day. And um, a lot of time I'll work in bed with my computer and I get, you know, quite a bit done. But it's just I need to learn to respect my body uh, when it's just um, feeling like it needs a break, which is the way it's been for the last couple of days. So luckily for me, this is... A rare weekend where I don't have an event on or um, somewhere I have to be in um, work so working I usually work on the weekends with the magazine so it's kind of nice to actually be able to have some time to rest and recover at home um, in my comfy bed in my lovely little house in Oregon and with um, Pixie Angel recovering from her surgery all she wants to do is lie around and sleep and be quiet as well so <laughs> we're perfect company for each other right now she's curled up at the end of my bed right now sleeping she still hasn't gotten up and it's like i think it's 9 30 or 10 o'clock in the morning so that's quite unusual for her um it'll probably take her a few more days to recover so um but the thing i wanted to talk about because i know i started this story about life with ra and um while I'm sitting here, I was thinking about, you know, the, the pieces I left hanging in that last video that I really wanted to sort of talk more about. Um, you know, um, the reason I'm not feeling very well at the moment, in case you're wondering, because I have been really, really well for the last year um, since I uh, started a new medication. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the medication history um, and the, the protocol that the rheumatologists sort of tend to... Um, stick to when you're newly diagnosed which in my mind is a form of torture really because um, you know you become a bit of a guinea pig and a bit of a science experiment while they test one thing after another on you until they hopefully find something that has at least some effect on on the worst of your symptoms and can alleviate the potential for permanent joint damage so um, obviously when I was first diagnosed three years ago it's, it's not quite um, yeah, it's been almost three years since I started this new... Uh, actually, no, it's not even been quite three years since I was diagnosed because I've been watching the Share Your Memory stuff come up on, on um, Facebook and it was three years ago this month that I was actually doing the Route 66 trip. So, And it was at the end of that trip, which I think was June 3rd or 4th, that um, RA first hit me up. Up until then, I was completely fine and coping very well. I had had... a car accident in, in Australia not long before, I'd, about a month before I'd started that trip and I've been noticing a lot of people have said that there was some element of trauma that kind of triggered off the the, um, the actual RA to kick in, um, divorce, car accident, some kind of psychological or physical trauma and I had just gone through a um, traumatic relationship separation as well um, and was very much pining for my ex for quite a long time. Um, and then I had the car accident. Um, my ex and I did end up getting back together briefly after that, but, you know, by that stage I was well and truly sick, and so I wasn't very appealing, to be honest with you, and, yeah, he kind of ran out of patience pretty quickly and, and ended it not long after that, so we didn't last very long the second time around. Anyway, I've been on my own ever since. Uh... And I don't feel comfortable about imposing um, my needs, I guess, um, upon another human being. I, I'm quite happy to cater to them myself and, you know, adjust my lifestyle to suit. But I can understand that it's frustrating and, and even my own family don't really understand it. Um, as a lot of you have expressed similar things with, you know, other other family members and people find it very hard to sort of really get it unless they're 
experiencing it themselves, which is totally understandable. So hence the videos. Um, I don't want you to experience it yourself, but I want you to at least get some kind of idea of what, how it does affect someone's life. So going back to the early diagnosis page, um, obviously being a natural healthy girl, um, the first line of medication they offered me uh, was prednisone, which is a steroid. Um, I didn't really know very much about it. They just sort of said, take this and you'll feel better. And it did alleviate the inflammation and the pain quite significantly uh, so that I was able to function, which I needed to because I was back on tour for another month straight after that. Um, I went back on tour with my ex, who wasn't my ex, we'd just gotten back together and he did Route 66 tours as well. So um, I wanted to be able to function and walk. So I kept taking the prednisone for a lot longer than I probably should have. And it wasn't until the end of about, you know, two months on prednisone that I actually read up about um, the long-term effects of it. And um, it's badly affected my bone density. I had a bone density test uh, with my mum who was 70 and um, her bone density was better than, than mine um, in my 40s so and that's probably partly RA, partly prednisone use, who knows but anyway it also made me very very angry and and um, very irritable and just not a very pleasant person to be around it affected my sleep drastically, I couldn't sleep um, somebody once told me when I was talking about prednisone I said oh prednisone you could you play a, a World Cup game of rugby with a broken leg on that stuff, which is a pretty accurate description. It, it does alleviate things, but there's a, you know, there's a high cost to pay. So I freaked out. I was like, I'm not taking this stuff anymore. And of course, promptly went back to the full suffering and pain that I had been in before I started taking it. So that was sort of in between the time of, of, of being tested positive for rheumatoid factor and um, getting in to see a rheumatologist. Once I was in the rheumatologist, they started me straight away on um, methotrexate. And that is a pretty nasty drug. Um, you take it by pill and it's the same drug that they give cancer patients. It's actually a chemotherapy drug, although in cancer it's used in um, much larger doses. But, you know, the effects are still similar. Your hair thins, some people lose their hair. It 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 works in autoimmune diseases by suppressing the immune system, quashing it so it's not overreacting and eating yourself up, which is a good thing, but you know, it makes you feel sick. It's horrible, it's not pleasant at all. So, you know, being being natural kind of approach, I was determined that I was gonna heal this thing naturally. And it's actually really frustrating because there's, there's so many videos and um, books and people out there saying how I cured my RA naturally you know so um, you feel a lot of pressure to to try to be like them and to do whatever it takes and I'll tell you the most annoying thing about having a disease like this is the fact that random strangers and people and friends and well-meaning I'm sure feel this compulsion to give you unsolicited med medical advice. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried that? Oh, I've got arthritis and I find that, you know, fish oil really helps or shark cartilage or have you tried vitamin D and supplements and uh, have you tried oh, a million things, you know, a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, a paleo diet, a, you know, cut out the carbs, cut out this. Um, I went on a program called the Patterson Program for Rheumatoid Arthritis. He had... Um, I don't know if he even calls it a cure, but he'd managed to, you know, get his life back to normal by using this incredibly restrictive diet. For the first few days, all I could have was cucumber and celery juice, I think it was. And then after that, it was slowly introduced, but all anti-inflammatory vegetables, really very little fruit or anything with sugar in it, no fats, no grains whatsoever. Um, no meat, no dairy, pretty much vegan. And I did that for six months because I was, you know, hellishly determined that I too could beat this naturally. And I was uh, consulting a um, natural health practitioner um, that was here in, in Roseburg in Oregon. And he tested me for all my nutrients and everything like that. And, 
you know, obviously they're looking for things like leaky gut. He tried the um, antibiotic protocol because there is a theory that RA can be triggered off by a, an infection. So I did all that approach. And um, when he tested me, he, he said that my actually my nutrients um, were really good. My nutrient uptake was excellent. And he said to me, apart from the fact that you have RA, you're the healthiest person I've ever had in my clinic, which didn't surprise me because I literally treat my body as if it were a, a Ferrari, you know, a really fine car. And I'm very conscious of researching um, good nutrition and what your body needs to function well. And, and like I said, I've always been very conscious of that. To this day, I still have um, in the morning, every morning, a green smoothie, which has um, tart, organic tart cherry juice frozen organic blueberries, a huge amount, like a couple of handfuls of organic baby spinach and an organic banana. And I add into that, and this is all organic obviously, uh, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, celery, cilantro, and parsley. I think that's that's it. That's my morning concoction and my Nutribullet. Where's that up? Love it. It's I call it my morning coffee. I've never been a coffee or tea drinker, but it definitely gets me going in the morning and it feels like it satisfies my body for all the nutrients that, that, that I need to the point where I actually don't get hungry again until about dinner time. And then I usually have um, just a salad or I make a big veggie soup with lots of organic veggies and things like that. So I still pretty much stick to that, that type of diet. Um, if I do eat bread, it's seeded bread and it's like one loaf of bread will last me a month or two. So it's not very often. Um, but having said that, you know, I could be quite naughty sometimes and get a craving for McDonald's and go and get a Big Mac or something like that. Um, I was doing all this and, and, and then I started reading recently that, you know, that, that more of a paleo approach was more appropriate and that we need fats and oils. So I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, I walk into the butcher and I'm like, I'm pretty much vegan. I don't even know what cuts of meat, but, you know, do you have anything grass fed or organic? Because I, I really am quite aghast at the commercial farming practices of meat and dairy here in America. It's shocking. I just, I don't want to consume this stuff. It's the meat, you know, I've driven past these feedlots as they call them, which is basically like a, a pasture, not even a pasture, it's a enclosed fenced dirt patch that reeks of cow shit. And these cows, these miserable poor cows are either sitting or lying around in their own shit. The smell is just disgusting. And then around the edge of these feedlots, and, that, and they go for like acres and acres, is just lines of troughs where they feed them corn, genetically modified corn products which a cow was never supposed to eat and I really just don't want to consume any product that's been raised in that way and put it in my body I just can't see how that could be healthy but my local butcher that I went to I didn't go to the supermarket I figured the local butcher would be the best bet and it's Oregon there's grass surely we can find this I said I'm looking for this grass fed organic meat he said oh we don't really sell that because there's just not enough call for it isn't that terrible because you know, I live in an area that's um, not a very wealthy area of Oregon and, you know, people would rather buy the cheap crap than than pay a little bit extra for food that's actually good for your body. So, um, you know, I got some grass-fed, they assured me it had no hormones or growth additives or anything like that. But cooked up a bit of mince and mixed it in with my salad just to see if that would make a difference and just, I don't know, I just didn't feel right, but um, neither does McDonald's, mind you, but, you know, so I'm not completely opposed to eating meat when I go on my trips and oftentimes there's, you know, a barbecue or uh, a catered meal of some sport. I don't want to be those one of these, oh, I can't have this, I can't have that people and I generally eat whatever when I'm somewhere else. I'm open to eating anything, but at home I am really strict about my diet so you know obviously when you get diagnosed with something that's causing you as much pain as it was me in those first sort of um well yeah first the first two years I was in agony constantly um 
you know, it's quite insulting for people to say, oh, have you tried this supplement or that supplement or have you, you know, tried this dietary approach or that dietary approach or, you know, um, yes, obviously I have researched absolutely everything. Like I was like some kind of crazy woman possessed on the internet searching constantly for every kind of alternative to taking chemotherapy drugs and high potent steroids that were destroying my bones. Yes, I did look for everything and yes, I have tried everything and I gave it a really good shot and as most other people with this disease will attest, it's only after having exhausted every possible avenue and realizing at the end of the day, the risks of the medication were horrendous, but your quality of life was zero. Um, trying to deal with it in any other way so um, as much as I appreciate people wanting to have some kind of input into um, you know helping me and seeing you know to relieve my suffering um, one thing I've been thankful for is the random strangers who would walk up to me in the street who could see me shuffling in pain um, and ask if they could pray for me and I thought that was so sweet like um, and that to me is a true expression of a, of a good Christian is, um, you know, I, I wasn't really, a, um, I wasn't going to church at that stage. I have since started going to church, but um, I was really quite moved by that, that compulsion of people to, to pray for me. And I do believe whether you're Christian or not Christian or, you know, whether you call it the universe as I used to or God, um, other people's good intentions and energy, healing energy, whatever they want to call it, directed towards you in a in an intentional, purposeful, um, caring, heartfelt way is always beneficial. Um, even if you know you can't do anything physically to help me, um, I'm always receptive to prayers and healing thoughts from friends, family caring strangers random people on the street um and i do believe that that you know that made me feel good and if you make me feel good then i will feel better uh, it reduces the stress and anxiety of feeling alone and you're suffering and that's all good stuff too so anyway i want to keep my videos shortish i know 15 plus minutes is not exactly short for a youtube video and you guys will lose patience and i have so much to talk about with this sort of stuff but Today I just wanted to touch on the whole um, random advice because it literally happens almost as soon as I mention my diagnosis, it'll come out of the next person's mouth and to the point where, um, you know, I remember when I did have a partner with me, I, you know, we used to laugh about it and he'd roll his eyes and only he could see what I had to experience on, on a daily basis because he'd be standing beside me and, and hearing this happen and um, trust me. I've tried everything. I didn't want it to get to the point. Um, I'm not feeling very well at the moment because um, we had a bit of a stuff up with my prescription with my medication um, and oh, it sounds like it might be here. It was being overnight delivered to me today so fingers crossed that's it and I'll sign off soon. Alright, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.